Welcome back. This is the third video on chemical equilibrium. Again, my chemical equilibrium videos are an at an introductory level to chemical equilibrium for new students or students who are coming back to chemistry and need a refresher. One of the key principles studied in chemical equilibrium is that of Le Chatelier's principle. And now before we dive into Le Chatelier's principle and an example here, let's review what chemical equilibrium is. Equilibrium is established in a reaction system when the opposing, the forward and the reverse reactions are proceeding or occurring at equal rates of reaction. Let us also remember that with uh, chemical equilibrium that it the expression value when you write the equilibrium expression that value is temperature specific and the expression depends on the stoichiometry of the equation. That's why our reaction here we need to have our reaction equation balanced before we proceed. Okay, so let's define Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, Le Chatelier's principle can be defined as the equilibrium, the chemical equilibrium, will shift, okay, it will shift or change in the direction that relieves any stressor that is put upon the reaction system, okay? So what we're talking about is any change, any stressor that we do to a reaction that alters the rate of either the forward or reverse reaction disturbs that equilibrium. Okay, once that equilibrium has been disturbed, Le Chatelier's principle says that the reaction system will relieve that stress. It will shift itself and change in the direction that will relieve that stress. Okay, so let's walk through one of these. Now I hope that you have read your textbook, looked at your class notes, and so forth on Le Chatelier's principle before going through this particular example because this is a, a tutorial video more than a teaching video. Okay, so Le Chatelier's principle, we have a synthesis reaction here of hydrogen gas, chlorine gas coming together to make hydrogen chloride. Okay. Also notice this reaction, it's got the thermo uh, chemistry involved here. We've got 184 kilojoules here. This is the enthalpy. Okay, let me go ahead and label that for you. You probably are used to seeing it as the delta H of reaction. Okay, so now let's review a little bit of thermochemistry. Notice that the 184 kilojoules of energy is written on the right side, on the product side of the reaction. Now what does that tell us? That tells us the reaction is exothermic, that the 184 kilojoules are produced, are released from this reaction system. So this is an exothermic reaction. So what we're looking at here. Okay, also notice it is balanced. We've got our two coefficient there to balance out the hydrogen and chlorines. Okay, so Le Chatelier's principle. These are all going to be examples. We're going to see how these stressors will affect this equilibrium. Will it shift it forward to the product side, to the production of more HCl side? Will it shift the reaction to the left side, to the reactant side, where the hydrogen and chlorine gases are, or will the stressor actually cause no shift in the equilibrium? So it neither favors the forward or the reverse reaction. Okay, so letter A here, let's add chlorine gas. Okay, so let's have this reaction at equilibrium. Let's add additional chlorine gas. Now, one thing that I like to think of is the phrase, add shifts away, add away. That's what I try to remember is add away. Okay, so if we're adding more chlorine, okay, then 
the equilibrium would shift itself forward. It would shift away from the chlorine gas into the HCl realm. Now, why would it do that? Well, let's see. To reestablish that ratio of products to reactants on our expression, it would need to increase production of HCl. Another way of thinking of this is, is that if you add chlorine gas, then you're more likely to have collisions. The probability of collisions between chlorine and hydrogen gas are more likely to occur. Okay? And which would lead to increased production of HCl. So, if we add chlorine gas, our equilibrium would shift to the right. Okay, some people will put just an arrow pointing to the right to represent the shift. Others will write the phrase shift right or forward. Or you might hear some say, tell you it shifts to the product side. Okay, but it would shift that direction to relieve that stressor, the addition of chlorine. Okay, let's try another one. Remove HCl. Okay, I gave you a little catchphrase on concentrations. When you add, you shift away. What I like to remember is when I see remove, I remain. I remain right where I'm at. Okay, so if I remove HCl, then that ratio of products to reactants, okay, my HCl would be low in that ratio, and I need to refill it. I need to bring that back up. So if I remove HCl, I'm going to remain on the HCl side. So the equilibrium is going to, again, shift to the right, okay, or forward, or to the products, to refill that HCl, to get that ratio back up, okay, to get it back up. Because remember, the ratio is products over reactants in our expression, okay? Letter C, let's increase pressure on this system. All three of these are gases. Now, when we look at pressure changes, what we need to focus on on pressure changes is moles of gas, okay? I'm going to write that for you, moles of gas. That's what you want to focus on, moles of gas. Okay. Let's look on the left side here, the reactant side. We have two moles of gas one of H2, one of Cl2. On the right side, we have two moles of gas, HCl. So we have two moles of gas, two moles of gas. What is pressure going to do? Increased pressure means we're going to have more collisions between those gas molecules. Who is going to be favored? The two moles of reactants, the two moles of products? Neither. Neither would be favored. There would be no shift. Okay, there would be no shift because both sides have the same moles of gas. Two moles, two moles. Okay. Now, let's look at decreased temperature. Okay, well, what would temperature do? Temperature often affects rate of reactions. It influences the collision rates, the probability of a su successful collision. Well, decreasing temperature. So that would not be the idea or the scenario that we drop the temperature and would we still get this 184 kilojoules? Okay, this is our heat energy, our enthalpy down here. If we decrease this temperature, okay, we remove some of the energy, the heat energy, okay, needed and what would happen? We need to refill. It's similar to letter B. If you remove, you remain. So if we decrease our temperature, we would shift to the right, forward or products. We would have to, so to say, in your mind, you might remember it as you have to refill that 184. You have to bring that back up. Okay. Oh, here's one, letter E, remove hydrogen gas. Ah, similar to letter B in that it was a removal. When we remove hydrogen gas, we remove it. What does that mean? We need to fill it back up. We need to refill it. Okay? It would be hard for this reaction 
to produce more HCl if we're taking the hydrogen away because the hydrogen needs to collide with the chlorine to create HCl. If we remove the H2, we are going to be short on hydrogens. So we need to refill it. We need to have that equilibrium is going to shift back to the left. Okay, it's going to shift left or reverse or some might say to the reactant side. It's going to shift that direction. Okay. What about decreasing pressure? Uh, again, we focus on moles of gas. We have two moles and two moles of gas on either side, so there is no shift. A pressure change does not influence the forward or the reverse reaction in an unequal manner. Two moles to two moles of gas. Okay, the addition of a catalyst. What does a catalyst do? A catalyst increases the rate of the forward and reverse reactions equally. They do not shift an equilibrium or cause a change in the K value, in that expression value. Okay? So an addition of a catalyst, there's no shift. It doesn't favor the forward or the reverse reaction. It speeds up the reaction equally, forward and reverse. So there's going to be no net shift. Okay, let's go to letter H. Increase the temperature. Increase temperature, okay, so let's focus on this 184 over here. If you increase, it's similar to an add, okay, to a concentration, so we shift away, okay, we increase the temperature, we would shift left to the reverse, to the reactant side, we would come back this way back and we would shift it back to the hydrogen and the chlorine gas sides. Okay, all right, and then decrease the system volume. Okay, so let's think on our gas laws. If we decrease volume, what naturally happens to the pressure? An increase in pressure. If we decrease the volume, then our molecules will be occupying a smaller space which will give you a higher probability of collisions and running into each other creating more collisions more collisions higher probability that they'll be successful okay so we're going to be looking at gas moles here okay so gas moles two moles two moles so what is a decrease in system volume going to do it's going to increase pressure and our increase in pressure caused no shift. Okay, so Le Chatelier's principle, you are focusing on stressors. Okay, pressure changes, volume changes, catalyst, addition or removal of concentration of a product or a reactant substance to see what will happen to the equilibrium, which way will it shift? Which direction will that stressor influence, the forward or the reverse?